How's it going everyone? It's Javi from Weather Sponge about Thousand and in this video we're gonna determine if the United States is bound to experience a colder than average winter or a warmer than average winter by today. Look at the average temperatures you should expect this winter for the 2022-2023 winter season. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather icons. So let's begin by taking a look at the North Atlantic Oscillation which plays a major role in terms of the temperatures you should experience in the United States and we do see that for the most part headed into the winter months we're more likely to either stay in a neutral North Atlantic oscillation phase or more leaning more towards a negative phase and that will play a big role because typically during a negative North Atlantic oscillation we see the westerly winds weaken which allows the polar vortex which is pretty much filled with cold air to move for southward into the United States which will of course bring those average temperatures down for this winter for the United States and the fact that we're um, expect to experience more of a negative um, North Atlantic oscillation phase this winter is um, points to indicates that we're more likely to experience colder than average conditions this winter if we were to take and another thing we're going to need to take a look at is of course the snow cover extent for the entirety of the northern hemisphere and right now in terms of snow cover extent comparing this year to the past 54 years this year is um this year's rank as of september is six when it comes to the amount of snow extent in the northern hemisphere which which really shows that there's gonna there's a lot more snow that and cold that's moving a little bit further southward since the extent is so large and typically when we see a higher snow uh a larger snow extent during the early part of the fall months that typically indicates that we're more likely to experience a colder and snowier than average winter because that means that the polar vortex is weaker to a point where more of that snow is moving further southward and as more snow moves further southward that weakens the instability that weakens the westerly winds and as all well, that prevents the cold air from staying around the polar region and move and allows the cold air to move further southward so in general when we see a higher amount of snow extent we're more likely to experience a colder and snowier than average winter for the united states and as of right now this is the sixth highest in, in the past 54 years when it comes to the amount of snow extent which indicates that we're more likely to experience a colder than average winter thanks to how large a snow extent is right now which is going to reduce the instability right around the mid latitudes and weaken the, the jet stream winds for the polar vortex weaken and that allows more cold air to move further southward into the united states and I'm going to take a look at what typically happens during a negative North Atlantic oscillation. Typically, like I said, when there's a larger amount of snow extent, typically the jet stream weakens. So we see more likely of a chance of a North Atlantic oscillation building during the winter time. And that's what's expected this winter where we're going to where we're more bound to experience more jet stream dips, which will allow the colder temperatures to move into the United States, which is definitely something to keep in mind that will Will certainly bring down the average temperatures you should experience throughout a large portion of the United States, especially in the northern portion where you aren't necessarily impacted by a severe drought that um, um, that's going on. Um, so keep that in mind throughout the entirety of the United States. Now, today, um, another pattern we're going to need to take a look at is what typically happens during La Nina when it comes to snowfall because La Nina is expected to build this winter and and when we see and typically what happens during La Nina is that we see a lot more snowfall throughout the northern portion of the United States. And this is another big determinant in determining the average temperatures you should experience in the United States. Because typically when there's more snowfall, it's colder since the snow cover not only reflects the short wave radiation from the sun back out into space, which cools down the temperature, but the um, short wave radiation has a much tougher time um, being able to penetrate surface and heat up the surface which allows the temperature to be a lot colder when there's a lot of snow on the ground because that short wave radiation is absorbed by the snow rather than the surface and snow is a lot less efficient in 
in storing heat because all that heat is used to melt the snow rather than to absorb it and raise the temperature so when there's more snow on the surface typically the temperatures are a lot colder and that's what's and that's what typically happens during a la nina where we see a lot more snow throughout the northern portion of the united states so i expect the average temperatures to be um colder than average for the northern united states and that's not the only thing that happens during a la nina we typically also see more jet stream dips if i were to show you guys the typical la nina winter time pattern we see that there's a pronounced polar jet stream dip that brings that cold air first southward into the northern midwest and we see more jet stream dips that even dip as far east as the northeast and we see uh and we see a pacific jet stream move through the north the pacific northwest which allows for um, more, um less stable and cooler than average conditions for the um, pacific northwest so as a result i expect the average the average chapters throughout the northern portion of the united states to be colder than average however when it comes to the southern united states we typically do see warmer than average conditions for the southeast and drier than average conditions pretty much throughout the entirety of the lower 40 of the southern portion of the lower 48 even extending to california and typically when it's drier it's also warmer since the dry soil heats up a lot faster than moist soil and stores a lot more heat than moist soil does so we typically do see warmer than average conditions when it's drier and warmer than average so for the southern united states expect the average temperatures to be a little bit warmer than average thanks to how dry it's expected to be especially since we're gonna be in where um majority of the united states is currently under a severe drought and like i've been saying in my previous videos it's very difficult for a drought to go away as a drought doesn't go away overnight as there's just a very um typically when there's a, a severe drought there's typically a lot of seeking air and a huge ridge that's just very difficult to get rid of and since there's not a lot of moisture on the ground there isn't a lot the atmosphere could do to moisten up the air the surrounding areas so as a result the drought it's very difficult for a drought to go away and i find it extremely difficult that within the next one to three months we'll see this drought completely dissipate as most likely majority of the united states especially um west of the mississippi river, river valley will be under a severe drought and that will play a big role in terms of the average temperatures you should experience because simply when it's drier it's warmer so i do expect that the southwestern portion of the united states will experience warmer than average conditions and even extending as far east as the southeast where now we're starting to see those drought conditions spread eastward as well which is definitely interesting and should raise the overall average temperature this winter for a large portion of the United States. Now, um, today we look at the average temperatures we typically experience during the winter time, during La Nina years. We see that the warmest area is Southern Florida, where we do see average temperatures right around the 60 degree range. And keep in mind, this is account. Um, this is in terms of the average temperature overall, not average temperature when it comes to high temperatures or not average temperature when it comes a low temperature this is the overall average temperature you should expect during the winter time between december and february including lows and the low temperatures and the high temperatures so typically the warmest area is southern florida and southern texas where uh, the overall average temperature during the winter time is hovering around 60s 50s just to north of that 40s in portions of texas and the northern uh, southeast states and then we see of course 30s right around new york city the interstate 95 corridor for the most part 20s just to the north of that and then we go as low as the zeros the single digits in the extreme northern portion of the united states right around minnesota and north dakota so we definitely need to base our forecast based on this map um since this is what's um what typically are the temperatures we experience during a la nina so that's how i that's pretty much where i base my map off of and take a look at my forecast 
when it comes to the, um, the average temperatures, you should expect this winter. So for Southern Florida, you should accept, um, expect temperatures in the 60s. This is a little bit further northward than what it typically is. So places like Orlando, I think, should experience average temperatures right around the 60s rather than what you typically experience, which is more hovering closer to the upper 50s. And this is as a result of the fact that it's expected to be warmer thanks to a La Nina that's expected to build the sea surf temperatures are also warmer so if you're along the coast in Florida the average the average temperature this winter should be warmer as well 50s just to the north of it this includes Houston New Orleans Jacksonville um, Pensacola Mobile and even extending westward into Los Angeles and San Diego is where I'm expecting your average winter temperature to hover around the 50s more so maybe the upper 50s right around Southern California as it typically does um, as it it's simply rare to experience um, below freezing temperatures in these areas and it does happen sometimes but it's suddenly a little bit more rare so your average temperature should be in the 50s and I did put it a little bit northward than what um, then tip go because I do expect the southern United States to experience warmer than average temperatures this winter now take a look at um, for northward I'm expecting your average temperatures to be in the 40s again a little bit further northward um, at, on places like Atlanta and Jackson, Mississippi, Dallas should expect their average temperatures to be around 40s, 30s, just the north of it. However, um, pretty much in, if you're in the area in the areas between the 30s and northward, that's where you should expect your average temperatures to be colder than average thanks to a lot of Nina bringing more jet stream dips, a negative North Atlantic oscillation, and we're expecting more snowfall this winter, which will reduce the average temperatures throughout the northern United States. So expect their average temperatures to hover around the 20s, right around Chicago, Des Moines, extending to Denver, Salt Lake City. Make, um, make sure to prepare for average temperatures hovering around the 20s, 30s, right around the Interstate 95 corridor, 10s just to the north of it, um, right around Milwaukee, um, extending to Minneapolis as well. And then you should expect your average winter temperature to be around the zeros, right around the northern portion of North Dakota and Minnesota. So this is my winter temperature forecast when it comes to average temperatures if you want even more in detail forecast make sure to comment down your location down below and i'll make sure to give you guys a more in deets i'll try my best to give you guys a more in detail temperature forecast regarding your location this winter so make sure to comment down below if you're interested but anyways guys i thank you guys for watching make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather content and i hope you guys have a great day